Okay, so part four. Hold on. Is it part four? Yeah, start over. All right. All right. So here we go with part four. Stuffing the seat. A very important part. Uh, just like a good recipe, just like a good, uh, it has the right ingredients, the right amount of ingredients. It's the same thing with upholstery. If you leave something out, or if you add too much, or if you use one thing too much, it makes a difference. So, so far we're on the right track. We have our webbing on the bottom, we have attached the springs to the webbing, and we've eight-way tied the top. So now we're going to do a burlap over the top. We're going to start stapling now. But before we do that, I wanted to uh, throw out a little bit more history on these type of Victorian chairs. They're also called, maybe you guys have never heard of it, hoop chairs. H-O-O-P-C-H-A-I-R-S, hoop chairs. And that was for, in that, in that time, in the 1800s, when uh, the ladies used to wear the hoop skirts. Around the Civil War, if you've watched uh, Gone with the Wind, you've seen the ladies with these huge skirts on, and they were called hoop skirts. And these chairs would accommodate the ladies' hoop skirts. So when a lady sat in this chair, her skirt would be way out, probably about a foot away, around, all the way around the front here. So the interesting thing about these hoop skirts during the Civil War for the Southern ladies, a many a spy escaped underneath a lady's hoop skirt and no Union soldier would lift that hoop skirt to see if there was a spy under there. So many a spy got away because of the hoop skirts. Just a little history. So let's get going. Okay, so here we go. I, I cut the burlap four inches bigger than the surface area. So you measure from the furthest point, the wood reel to wood reel at four inches and same thing side to side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drape this over like so to get an equal amount. Just try to balance it out. Actually, I cut this a little bit deeper, so I'm going to just cut off my... I didn't need as much, I guess, but if you're at home, you want to, you want to do four inches. So, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to get this set up, and I'm going to fold this. The problem with folding this, I'm going to start the back reel. We always start the back reel, most cases, first, right? I'm going to fold this over and staple it. I'm not going to go too close to the post. Stay off about two or three inches from the post because you have to do some cutting. So for all you beginners out there, burlap is a great way to practice your cuts. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you make a mistake on your burlap, no big deal. If you make a mistake on a fine French silk, big deal, right? So what you want to do is you, you've got I've got the set uh, the back set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch from where I've stapled on the back, no further this way. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm not folding it. Notice how I'm not folding it. I'm going to stretch it and staple it, not folded it yet. So one side's your folded and stapled side, the other side's your stretch side, unfolded. So watch. So I'm going to, this is a hand stretch. You don't need your webbing stretcher. People say, do I need my webbing stretcher? No, just your hand and stretch. This is taut. You stretch it taut. Okay? Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to staple any further than those back staples opposite. Watch. So that's all I did, okay? And I'm not going to fold this yet. What I am going to do, I am going to trim this down just a little bit more. I guess I overcut this. <laughs> so, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the back cuts. I just want to show you this. I'm going to hold this up here to show you, and I'm going to cut this. Great way to practice. Actually, I'm going to show you a little technique for beginners. I'm going to get a piece of chalk a marker. Probably would recommend chalk over a marker, but it's just the burlap, so and I, I want to be able to show you. So when you look at a cut, you're looking, by the way, we're going to be offering more details in the classes that are upcoming on this. So we're giving you a little preview on some of the more of the detail of upholstery. Okay, and this is it. So you have to be really good at cuts. So what you want to try to do is visualize this cut after it's cut, and what you try to do is offer coverage on the seat, okay? I'm kind of pretending like this is the fabric, okay? So what you want to do is you want to come to the middle of this post with the cut, and so right about there. Don't always go by the fold, the angle of the fold. That doesn't tell the story at all. What you want to try to do is visualize in your mind, mind's eye what you want done. So I want what I want done is the two points after it's cut to meet out here, it's spaced evenly. That's what I'm trying to do on most cuts. That's what you're trying to accomplish. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this out for you. I'm going to draw the fabric cut first. Okay, that's the fabric cut, which is 
which is not as much as the uh, burlap. On the burlap, you get cut it a little deeper because you want to go around the post and you're closer to the bottom of the seat. So I'll show you what I mean. So we are going to come down here, but these cuts are going to be extended like so. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is cap this, bring this down. I'm going to cut these. And we're going to do our back cuts first. Okay, and then we're going to get more staples in there. There. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, do a couple of more stapling here on the back. On the back. Just we could finish the stapling on the back now. There we go. Now that we finished the staple in the back because we cut it, we cut the back post. We don't want to cut the front post until we've stretched the burlap to the front even further to the front. Watch. So I'm going to stretch this. Now this should be balancing the springs out and filling in all the other empty spaces that are left over where the twines couldn't tie. Okay, on this side we're going to cut this now. So I'm going to show you on this one. This was the fabric you have it. So that's the hard part about cutting, folks, is that it has to be stretched before you cut. That's what makes it more difficult, okay? Because it's sometimes the fabric is folded in an unnatural way because you've got to stretch tight, but it has to be stretched tight to get a proper read on the cut. So I'm going to pretend this is the fabric, okay? Fabric would be cut. We're going to be cutting to here, let's say. So you'd have your fabric up like so and then you'd be making a cut to the center of the post and then a small, we call a V-cut, right, right like that. But because it's the burlap, we're going to fold it like so. We're going to extend the cut a little bit and extend it way over like this. Okay, so let's just do that. Good practice. It's good practice for the, for the fabric. See that? Cut right like that. And now, don't cut the other side until you've secured. This is going to be, I'm going to, this is going to be my folded side, right? And the other side is going to be my stretch side. But you don't want to cut both sides at once. Don't, don't do that. Don't get in the bad habit of cutting both sides at the same time. Because if you make a mistake on your fabric, for instance, and if you've cut both sides, it's harder to cover up a mistake. If you cut one side, sometimes you can, unless it's a stripe, you can kind of tweak it a little bit to make it work. So we're going to get giving you huge amounts of tips in these classes coming up, these live classes we're going to be having. We'll announce that dates on those as we go along. We're really excited about that. I think it gives you guys a really good opportunity to learn through other people learning. And I know I, I'm a better teacher because I teach. I'm a better upholsterer because I teach. So I think it's the same thing with students. So what I'm going to do now is cut cut this side now that I'm satisfied that on the other side um, I've got it secured. Now this is going to be my stretch side. I'm stretching and I'm stapling. I'm going to cut this a little deeper here. Maybe cut this a little deeper there. Finish stretching here. To load up on my staples. Stretch. I'm stretching here. Now, i just get this one here. I'm just going to tuck that in like so. Now I'm ready to finish my stapling on my fold. So I'm going to fold this over. So our next step is going to be the edge roll. Now, uh, the old-fashioned name for this particular edge roll was fox edging. Now they just call everything edge roll, and there are th at least three different sizes. I carry a small, medium, and large. This is the large. And what I'm going to be doing is putting it on the front. And We're getting some really good questions from our YouTube uh, subscribers. Um, we're going to be answering those upcoming. But they're really pointed questions. I really like them. Um, it gets to, into some a lot of detail. and. People will say, why is he picking the biggest uh, edge roll on this? Well, 
If you remember, we had a double edge um, edge roll on this, and we want some loft on this because the seat is everything. So we put a lot of effort back into the seat to try to get it to look as original as possible and the same aesthetically to look the same. So we're going to start with that's the determination of the big on the big uh, edge roll. So let's start. I'm going to put this on right here. Now, you, now I want to just explain something about these edge rolls. They're machine made and um, they have a flat side. If you're looking at it, you wouldn't think so, but there's a flat side and there's a not a flat side. So you want to put it down flat side down into your wood. Now what you can do first is you can try to get this stapled across as well as you can. You know, I'm, I'm sideways for the benefit of the camera. You guys would be working like this with your gun this way. That's a safer way of doing it too. Uh, for your benefit, I'm holding the gun in a weird way so that you can see what I'm doing. But look what I'm doing. This is really important. I'm at the edge of the wood. You could be even with the edge of the wood. Now, some of it, when you get really good later on, or some of you professionals who are watching me and you haven't used this, a little bit over the edge is really uh, better. But for beginners, if you just are even with the edge, you, you would be okay. So what you have to try to do is try to get a staple in the flange side. Notice how my gun is angled a little bit towards the front because I'm trying to get the wood. Okay, if I'm, if I'm like this, I'm probably going to miss the wood. So this is a little tricky, but I'm really happy with the way these staples are going in. I'm going to do this every couple of inches. And at the end, I'm going to get a couple of staples here. I'm going to dress this up all the way around like this. Now look, there's a little gap in here. You can cut this down pretty small. A sharp pair of scissors you need or a sharp knife. Be very careful when you're cutting this stuff. It's very thick. So I'm going to cut all my pieces. Need another piece in here. I'm going to cut both sides now and the last piece. So it's all the way around in this case. In some cases not so. So I'm going to measure it for here. Cut this. So we have our, all our edge roll cut. I'm going to continue stapling my, ed stapling my edge roll down. Make sure the flat side is down. It's a lot harder to staple when the other side is, when the round side is up. You know it right away. So this is just our first stapling on this. Now in this one, <coughs> I'm going to be <coughs> I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I have to put the staple through the, I'm skimming the edge right here. I'm going to let Patrick, I'm going to move over here to show you this. I'm going to switch to a big staple. And I'm skimming the edge. I want you guys to be very careful when you do this. If you're not comfortable with this, don't do it. You staple it, skimming the edge, stapling. Now the reason this is dangerous is because your gun can slip. So make sure there's nobody around you and make sure you're off to the side like I am. I've been doing this for 42 years and I'm always thinking about safety. And so the way I do it is, if you notice where my fingers are, I'm not anywhere near the trigger. You know, you're talking, you know, 90 pounds of pressure in these guns and the staple will go through your finger. So you really want to be careful. I mean, most, most of you beginners should have a safety on. You know, professionals take the safety off, admittedly. Um, we take it off um, and we use the gun like this, but no professional that I know would have his finger on the trigger at all times. You're like this, you're off like this, and look, I'm in here, and then I move my finger. You see my finger moving? Do you see that? It's moving over when I got the head of the gun down. Okay, we want you guys to be safe. And you can do this with tacks, by the way. You can do this with tacks if you're not using a pneumatic staple gun. Okay, so now let's finish up this side. Just get that baby in there. We are going to go back and do something else in a minute. I've got it. I've got them set in there pretty much. But now I, I need to go back and I need to fill in with some tacks. Okay, some 14 ounce tacks. I want to make sure that this stays put. So when you put your 14 ounce tacks in, don't use your magnetic end of your hammer. Don't you? Don't do that. Make sure that you take the tack. Don't have your hammer anywhere near it. 
Okay, and I want you just to kind of thumb it in there first. Okay, and, there, and there's a very good reason why you don't want to use your magnetic hammer here. Take it from me now. I have hurt myself doing this. Use your magnetic hammer in, and you're hammering, and that the tack comes up, and then you hammer your finger. So be careful with that. Don't and use don't use your magnetic hammer at all. Your magnetic end. So thumb it in, and then tack it in. I'm going to do this all the way around, but I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do on the front. This is going to assure us that this isn't going to move over time. So good upholsterer is looking, he or she wants that something to last for many, many, many years. Um, and this is one way of assuring that this, this is lost, this edge roll doesn't move. If you've had manufactured furniture where the front seat has given way and it looks funny, it looks like there's something extra in there, like a, something bulky, that this is what it is and they haven't secured it. Usually they use nylon. So I don't, so that's a replacement that I don't like on this edge roll is the nylon. Sometimes we need to use it for it, I know, because it's less expensive and all that, but um, I like to use it. And I wanted to show you also here what I'm doing. I'm doing this about every three inches, but I'm actually pinching this a little bit on this side. I'm not just in the flange, I'm pinching pinching on this side. So what that does, watch what this does. Normally you don't want puckers like this in your fabric. On this one it's good because that means it's tight. Okay? So I'm just going to do one more and then we'll do the rest of them. But I'm only going to show you this. Okay, now I'm going to do the rest of them. Okay, so now I've, I, I started with the stapling, the flange, um, and that was pretty much just to set it on there where I wanted it. And then I put tacks on to really secure it in the back. But now I have this action going on. I don't want that. So I'm thinking of longevity, right? So what I'm going to do, and really be careful. This is a really good tip for you guys. You could do this with six ounce tacks if you want. Okay, but with the staple gun, you're just going to pinch this like you did the other side. Pinch it every two inches. And what that does, is it keeps this really tight. Now the alternative to this is burlapping over it and then and then trying to tack it or staple it. But when you're doing just the edge roll, it really tightens up nice. So I don't expect this to move at all when people sit on it. So we're trying to make an experience, a good seating experience for a long time. And that's it. We did the rest of the other pieces. Now we're going to move on to the rubberized horsehair. So here we go. You know, how do I determine rubberized? It had horse, it had a really thin layer of horsehair, but it had stuff mostly with the hay. So I have to replace that. So we are going to put some horsehair in this, which I'm kind of excited about because people don't usually do that. But I'm going to do it in this case anyhow. Even though the, even though I wasn't commissioned to do the horsehair, I am going to do the horsehair because I just think the piece warrants it. We're having a lot of fun with this piece. It's it's a really good shape. It has a lot of history. So we feel it needs, it, it, it deserves the, the real horsehair. And let me tell you folks, there's no other batting in anywhere that's as good as the horsehair. And the reason it's good is because each little hair is like a mini spring and it doesn't lose its resistance. It doesn't lose its shape, doesn't lose that uh, over time. I mean, when you go into a, a pyramid, what do they find? They don't find, a lot of times they don't find, uh, the, the only thing on the mummy they find are the hairs. So hair will last. Uh, but horse hair is really just really uh, beautiful because uh, it's from the shaved part of the horse. They don't kill the horse. It's from the uh, body part and they shave the horse. And they're little small hairs. They're not the main like you think they are. The long hairs, they're the short hair. So um, I'll show you that in a minute. We're not there yet. But I'm going to use as a base though, rubberized horse hair over our springs. Uh, that's going to provide a good evening out uh, even more than the burlap did. And let's get going with that. So. Rubberized horse hair. Cool. It comes, it's a, it's a synthetic. Some synthetics are good, not all of them are bad. And it's got that meshing on the butt bottom, and you want the, what looks like horse hair from the top. Okay, and what you want to do is never pre cut this. Never pre cut this rubberized horse hair because there's no forgiveness in this at all. It's very tight weave. And, and that's, what, that's what makes it good over the springs. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start in the back first. I'm going to Get this secured to the wood near the near where the edge roll is. Okay, it's going to do the back like that for us. So what makes this difficult to use though is that if you undercut this, you're not going to have any place to staple. So that the the trick is when you measure for the cutting, I'm about to cut the front. 
is that you go halfway on this wood on this uh, edge roll on the front uh, as a chalk line. Look at this. So the reason you're you're a little oversized, right? Cut this. Okay, so what that enables us to do, because it's oversized a little bit, is when you push down into the roll, you're just where you need to be. And we're going to staple that down. Inside, see where it's inside the roll. Okay, now we're going to go to, I'm going to make these cuts, our uh, cuts again around the post. Okay, these, these are just straight on cuts. There's nothing fancy about these at all. And that you're just cutting this in order to get a read on where, where your chalk line should be. So we're going to chalk this the same method. Just a little bit, we're halfway on that edge roll. Okay? We're not going to cut both sides because if you're short on one side, you might be able to stretch this stuff a little bit. That's going to be nice. So, there we go. That's good. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm just going to cut this off a little bit. A little bit more trimming there. I'd say it's always better to um, overcut it. I mean, not to overcut it, but, but make it slow when you cut it. If you're not sure of yourself, cut, cut it longer than you think it might be, and then and then sh and then narrow it down. Okay, so I'm going to trim this up. This side I'm just going to freehand, which I can do sometimes, but for you, I think you should chop it. Okay, make this. That's excellent. Okay, so there we have it. And now look at how beautiful and smooth this is, is, is ending up. Isn't that nice? It's crowning out just the way I want it. It's getting to look really like the original. So our recipe is really working. Real horse hair. Very expensive. Very expensive. It's like gold. I feel like a prospector out there in the wild west. Here I go. Hey! Right? Beautiful stuff. Wait till you see this. I mean, this is, this is really like treasure, really. It's fresh, brand new, smells good. It's not used. We don't use used horse hair. This is, this is a first run product. Beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a handful at a time. And it, the, all horse hair needs to be picked, okay? So when it comes to you, it needs to be picked. There's a couple of clumps in there, and you can do it really quick. Okay, and what you do is you, with your favorite hand, is your pick picking hand. If you're right-handed, this is how I'm doing it. Your left hand, you hold the horse hand, you just pick it like this to pick it so that there's no lumps. And then one handful at a time goes into the chair, okay? So here we go. And Patrick probably will speed this part up a little bit. And what we're doing here is like, when, it's like kneading dough. You know, you're kneading the dough together like so. And it becomes one, it's gonna become one piece by the time we're done. All those little hairs are gonna interlock. It's another great quality of this batting, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to stabilize the horse hair a little bit, especially on the front edge. And so what I'm going to do is a blanket stitch. And I'm going to slow this down. I'm going to get the stitch started over here, just to, you know, draw a knot over here. And we're going to get a close-up of this. A blanket stitch pretty much is a stitch that you intentionally go through the loop, whereas when you're hand stitching, if any of you have hand stitched, you don't want to do that. But on a blanket stitch, you do. Watch. So what it does is I'm coming through about a little bit in. You can't go to the edge of the horse here. You need to grab a few of them, right? And I'm skimming the top edge of the, of the edge roll. And watch what I do. I'm going to purposely come through the loop, which is right here. And watch what happens, how nice this tight. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful stitch? And then I'm going to come here. I'm going to go right across. I have one of the big, I picked up a really big curved needle. I think this is a number, 
six, six inch curved needle. That's how you know. You go from here to here, whatever that is in inches, that's the size needle you have, right? Uh, you don't need as big a needle. A four will do this easily. But you can't use a hand stitching, obviously. You can't use a hand stitching needle like a one inch needle on this. So needle size is important. See that? Nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm a little, I notice on this end I added a little bit on the end. I'm going to add a little bit more hair. I wonder if those cowboys who sat in this chair realize how much work went into this. Or maybe some of those cowboys were upholsters at night. Maybe during the day they they gathered up the cows and the horses and fed them the hay, the same hay that they used to stuff their chair at night. Wouldn't that be something? I, I bet there was an upholsterer cowboy out there somewhere. Uh, not me though. You can ask my son. I'm not much of a cowboy. I tried throwing a hatchet once at a target in, a, in one of those uh, rodeo places that they have out west and they got a good laugh over me because every time I tried to hit the target, maybe Patrick can find that footage to show you on here, every time I tried to hit the target the, the butt end of the axe went in. <laughs> Anyhow, I, was, I think I'll stick to a pull string for now. So I'm all done here with this stitch and we'll cut that. And then what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to go and I'm just going to get a couple of stitches in here. Nothing fancy, just to stabilize the interior a little bit. Okay, and you can do that with a couple of rows of stitching. Okay, I'm going to grab about three yards of twine. This is the nylon twine, by the way. Some of you might know it by the tufting twine. Okay, and I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, go in and out here. I'm just going to, I'm going to try to grab as much of the hair by taking long, long stitches as I can, right? And see, I'm going to come over like this and grab a big stitch. And the needle itself makes a big stitch. So, coming out like there, see that? Just to stabilize it a little bit, you know? Isn't that nice? A uh, cake is coming out nice. So, and I'm going to end that right there. I'm just getting a small knot, but I'm not tightening. This isn't over tightening at all because you don't want to distort the, the beautiful horse hair. Or you, if Patrick get a close up of the, see how see how these almost look. You can see the spring like quality to these. See that? So imagine you've got probably ten thousand little mini springs in the chair. That's what makes one of the things that makes it comfortable. Then you got those massive springs underneath. I'm getting really excited because this is coming out so nice. Okay, so on to, oh look, I, we got another, <laughs> got a goose feather in there. I don't know where that came from, but we don't want that. Um, so, uh, but also good material, by the way, for other practical uses. So now let's go to the next step, which is going to be the muslin. So now the muslin. Now the muslin actually help, helps contain the horse hair even more than our tying does. And here's the thing, folks. Muslin in upholstery was, was first introduced to go over horse hair. On a sprung cushion period. It's not used anywhere else. Uh, oftentimes today with the crossover people out there who've done other things like uh, you know draperies maybe, they use a lot of lining in, the, in that industry when they come over. They keep using lining almost everywhere. Now it is a good tool for you beginners. If you want to use muslin before your fabric just to get your cutting down and everything, that's a great idea. To keep this in mind though, you're stapling this on you're adding a whole nother row of staples. In most cases, it's unnecessary as you get, as you progress. So the beginners, don't, it's a great tool, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm gonna drape this, and it's, it's a good way to practice your cuts. If you make a mistake on the muslin, like the burlap, no big deal, and I'll show you. So let's Okay, so, you drape the, if the muslin's cut three inches oversized, just like your fabric, so you go from right where your finished wood is to where your finished wood is at three inches. That's going to be the same cutting as your, as your fabric, and you'll see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drape this over. I'm going to try to get it as even as possible without measuring it. You don't have to measure this. This is the eyeball, this. Okay. So I'm going to turn this around to show you how to begin. Now what we're going to be doing is beginning. If you guys have six ounce tacks, I would, su I would suggest you can use that. But with me, sometimes um, I use the staple. Now you be very careful. I recommend six ounce tacks. Yeah, I, I know I'm not going to do it because for the sake of time, 
I'm trying to show you as much as possible within a certain amount of time. I'm going to take my staple gun and just kind of hit it sideways like this just to get create a, 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 a not a permanent staple, it's a halfway in staple. But that's a little dangerous. I don't want you guys to get hurt. So I think a six ounce tack, if you've got the time, use a six ounce tack and put it in halfway just to hold it back. And that means that you put a half a tack in halfway, a staple in halfway, you know that you're going to be taking it out. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is on the front, I'm going to stretch this to the front opposite where I just staked the, I'm going, I am going to stake this all the way. Okay? So um, look at this. I'm getting this perfectly the way I want it, which is taut. It's coming over the edge really nicely. It's forming out nice. I like that. So I'm going to get three staples in start. And then I'm going to take, watch what I do here. I'm taking my finger up in this area and I'm stretching. So with these new shows, we're going to be, we're going to be having, I'm going to have like eight, we're going to set it up for eight weeks uh, with people bringing their own projects in, small projects where they can finish them. Maybe three or four people. And we're going to be showing you all the aspects that you don't see in other videos, which is stretching. Stretching is such a huge thing on upholstery. And I'm going to go through a lot of detail. I'm going to do it through the beginnings. So watch this. I'm going to stay, I'm going to, I stretch that into the side and then stay. Stretch this, get this nice and smooth. And we can work this again too, by the way, with a regulator. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And I'm just going to, this is going out so nice that I'm just going to stay like it so much. Now for you guys at home, you could pin tack this too. You don't have to commit to the stapling like I just did. Okay, but now we're ready to do some cuts on the back and we might want to get a close-up of this. So look, we need to cut the muslin around this post. So um, we, we're going to the halfway point of the post, the halfway width point of the post, which is right about there. And, and the fold can fool a lot of people. Don't go by the fold exclusively. Go by how, how it's going to cut, how it's going to meet out here after it's cut. You have to actually have to kind of predict that. So what I'm looking at, that's what I'm sizing up now. I'm going to come down just like so. And then I'm going to make this. Now this is not the fabric cut. That's the muslin cut, which is the, the, the muslin cuts way this, you know, overcut. If it were the fabric, we'd be overcut here. But you'll see that in a minute. So that gets like that. Now what I'm going to do is secure that. Now, I never cut, I'm going to cut that even deeper, I never cut both at the same time. Notice I'm doing one at a time, very important. Then I'm going to staple this, I'll get those later. up a little bit, stretch it down, tuck that in a little bit, stretch this down, and then we can take out our pin staples and get that area tight. All right. All right, come to the front now, front cuts. Before we cut the front, and this is what makes it hard cutting, because you have to stretch it. I str I'm, str I'm getting the rest of my stretched to the front, get a few staples there before I cut. See, because you stretch, you have to stretch the fabric, get it in position of where the actual cut is. Okay, now we're going to show you this cut. Uh, I have to congratulate my my cameraman. This, these aren't easy to film because he has to change position, change cameras. He's doing a good job. So I'm just going to make a V-cut there. Come over like this. I'm going to secure this before I go to the other side. Make sure your scissors are away from you. You don't want those falling, right? And then we're going to... Okay, I'm going to put a little pattern in here. Watch this. So I think it could use a little bit more in this... Where was I? In this area. Maybe not. Let's just see. Gonna staple that, and then tuck that in a little bit. Oh no, that's working out good. Look at that. So, so what you're trying to achieve here is um, the padding on the top, and really no padding coming around. Hardly any padding coming around the edge, and mostly a clear, a clear uh, view of your with your stapling. You don't want to be stapling through padding ever on 
even your fabric and I'll explain that on the fabric but we're going to have a layer of cotton which is going to come down further which is going to cover all of the seat but not where you're tacking or stapling that very important okay so th those are things you're not <laughs> I'm telling you that I, I've been teaching I taught over 30 years people and they and I said it before they made me bet a better upholster my students because they're asking all these questions and I have to stop and think and maybe and modify and believe me I've modified um, where we can really we're going to be teaching you the very best method of learning upholstery and I believe the, the easiest way of learning upholstery which is through a sympathetic mentor that promotes learning not yelling at people saying you didn't get it right when when uh, you've been doing something for so many years you got a beginner and it's almost like boot camp well, we're not going to do that we're going to be trying to be sensitive at, with our teaching it's the best way for people to learn so um, I have this side secure happy with that I'm going to do the corners you don't necessarily want a pleat in your, in your muslin, but um, actually it's good practice too. You can just fold it over for now. That's not going to be the fabric though, just to let you know. Look at this. This is, now we, this is really coming out nice. I'm really happy with this. I'm really working our hearts out here, aren't we? It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But it's good. The product is good. The end result is good. The hard work. I, I'm sure I've, we've been hearing back from people who saying they're following along with us on these videos and they're, they're, they're so happy. One woman said, whoopee! You know, we, we love that feedback. That keeps us going, believe me. We're hearing from people who learn how to tie. They never had learned how to tie eight-way tied coil springs before. They're calling us and saying, or emailing us and saying, not wonderful that they feel confident one person said they felt confident to do other projects so stay tuned and please don't forget to tell people to subscribe so important for us and for you because it keeps it's going to make me keep doing these <laughs> so now the only thing I'm going to do now is trim this and I, I want to keep open the line between the finished wood and the, the, the muslin, there has to be a line of where we're going to be tacking or stapling next, okay? So you don't want this peeking through, okay, there's a little thread peeking through. We don't want any of this peeking through. We want to, we want to be clean. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This is beautiful. I'm really happy with this. Happy that I could use some real horse hair on this. So. I think the customer will be happy. If the customer ever looks at this video, they're going to know, wow, really put an effort into that chair. Carrying on the traditions of upholstery. And I want all you out there to carry on some of the good tradition of upholstery. So I'm looking forward to teaching, training you guys. Learning, you're going to be learning a lot from these videos. The nice thing about a video is which I didn't have the benefit of, is that you can replay it and replay it and, and repetitive, repetitive. I can't stress that enough. That's what makes you a good upholster. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So for history's sake, I'm going to sign this. You never know. Maybe a hundred years from now, somebody will find it and say, oh, that's that guy that did those videos. <laughs> so let's, let's sign it. Kevin Kennedy. So, great, our next step, uh, we're upholstery ready now that the, we have the muslin on the seat and we have, we're going to be going over this and I think I mentioned um, we're not going to be gluing the cotton on, we'll probably be putting a half a layer of cotton on this, a full layer of cotton on this and then we'll be ready for the fabric. So, I'm going to take a glance at the fabric to see what the customer picked out just because uh, I don't know. So, let's just take the wrapping off, take a look at this. Ooh, I think I like this, very classic red velvet. Beautiful. Can't wait for the last segment. 